All right, so we talked about rocks and minerals and how they make up rocks. Now we're going to talk about minerals and mining. So what are minerals? Um, we kind of talked about that before, but they are naturally occurring solids with a regular repeating structure. So this is more like chemistry-based. Um, might, we might get into it a little bit later. Um, but really the important thing is that um, they're not man-made and they have this um, repeating structure to kind of... Um, make it crystalline. That's a lot of the times what we're looking at there. So um, we've got metallic and non-metallic minerals. So metallic minerals, some good examples of that are going to be aluminum, gold, copper, and iron. Um, a lot of their properties make them industrially important. So you see a lot of iron, um, aluminum, gold, copper in, in industry. Um, pretty much every plumbing system has copper. So um, even just with copper, if we get rid of that, um, we got a problem with our plumbing system. A lot of people used lead back in the days. Um, come to find out, lead is a neurotoxin. So a lot of the times um, with those older civilizations, they would get lead poisoning because they would have a leakage or something. Um, so that's why copper is good, iron is good. Um, and so th they're alloys. We, they make alloys as well. So that's just like a mixture between a lot of them or between... Um, metallic minerals. It's like bronze. Um, then non-metallic minerals, they're super widely used. Um, we use them more than, than you could even imagine, most likely. Um, and then another important thing about non-metallic minerals is that they're highly valued, um, a lot of them. So we're going to be talking about like the precious gems, like diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, um, basically all your birthstones. Um, those are non-metallic minerals. Um, really fun fact here, um, diamond is the most common precipitate in the solar system. So it's not water. Water falls from the sky here, but water is generally really hard to find in our solar system. Whereas diamonds are super easy to find throughout our solar system, but their worth here is like incredibly high for some reason. So um, they're pretty. All right, so here's just more uses of minerals. Um, Halite, this is a big one. It's basically table salt, so you use that almost every day. Graphite, that's in your pencils, um, lubricants, tennis rackets, um, like sometimes like frames for things like bikes and stuff. Um, gold, we all know why gold is good. And uh, talc, talc is a non metallic mineral that we use for like talcum powder, ceramics, paint, paper, plastics, and cosmetics. So there's, you know, there's just a lot of uses for minerals that we don't really think about all the time. All right, so let's talk about mineral extraction, mining. Um, first of all, to find the minerals, we need to explore areas. So we use things like uh, gravity, magnetism, and radioactive reading. So um, we use those, we use, uh, you know, how much gravity um, is being um, kind of pulled down how much gravity energy is being pulled down in a certain area. It kind of tells us that that area is more dense. There's probably certain minerals there. Magnetism is going to tell us that we have like metallic minerals there. Um, and then radioactive reading, you know, that's like uranium, stuff like that. Um, and then we use aerial photos and satellite images. Um, so if, they're, if those minerals are on the surface, we're going to see them with these aerial photos, the over-the-top view. Um, so with extraction, we have a couple ways that we mine. We use placer mining. Um, so this is basically in rivers. It only occurs in fast-moving water. What's happening is, um, like, in California, we did this during the gold rush. Um, we would put a bunch of um, people on, like, a bend in a river that we knew that gold was traveling down, and we would have them just, like, dig into the side of that river and take all the gold out. Um, so placer mining is, is generally pretty eco-friendly because all those minerals are right there for you. So they're, they're traveling down a body of water, and then when that body of water hits a bend, the denser material, which is going to be minerals, are going to stick to the edge of that and be deposited. So they're pretty easy to get to. Um, then we have subsurface mining. So that's just when the deposits are below the surface, usually greater than 50 meters. Um, it can be less than 50 meters too. It's, it's just when it's below the surface a lot of the times. Um, we, three classifications for subsurface mining are gonna be room and pillar mining. 
Um, that's when you think of like the classic canary in the coal mine type of thing. You got people using their pickaxes um, in this huge area supported by pillars. Um, then we've got long wall mining, which essentially that's just, we dug a really, really long strip of um, earth out underneath of the surface and we're mining the sides of that. And then solution mining, which um, is kind of like solar evaporation here. We put our minerals, or we, we run a solute through the earth, and then um, we know that there are certain minerals that dissolve in that solute, so it's normally water. Um, so they dissolve in that water, we send that water to a holding area, that water evaporates, and what's left is the mineral. Um, and then we've got surface mining. So surface mining is very, very destructive. It's not a very good way to mine. Um, and that's just when the deposits are near the surface, so that's going to be less than 50 meters. Um, quarrying, so basically just digging a huge hole in the earth, that's surface mining. That's really bad. Um, and then solar evaporation, that's kind of like solution mining. We use that with halite or um, salt. Um, essentially, we just get a lot of ocean water flowing through a system. We divert that ocean water. We push it into an area where we know it's going to stay there. Um, and then we wait for it to evaporate. And what's left is the halite or that salt um, inside of the water. So here is just a good picture of placer mining. We've got this river down here. This is a bend. Um, they know that there's a bunch of minerals on this bend, so they took a bunch of um, extracting tools, like a backhoe or um, um, an excavator, all sorts of things like that. They come in, they dig this side of the bank up, uh, they get the minerals they need, and then they make sure that that bank is um, reclaimed and back to the state it was previously. So this isn't generally very bad for the um, ecology of a system. It's, it's relatively okay. Um, subsurface mining, this is, this is pretty okay for the ecology as well. Um, you know, basically we're just going way down deep into the earth and taking minerals where we know they are, um, so that's not super destructive. This is a good picture of that, um, that room and pillar, I think it's called. Yeah, room and pillar mining. So they have this large area it's supported by pillars, which they've just, essentially they've just like um, created holes in this area and left pillars to keep, keep this room supported. Um, and that's what these guys are doing, they're room and pillar mining. Um, typically back in the day, these guys would have pickaxes. And then this is long wall mining. So this goes on for probably a mile or two um, and they're just taking the sides of this area and um, extracting minerals from there. So it's, it's different from this. Um, because it's just one long tube, basically. And this is just a big room that they um, kind of cut away at. So here's surface mining. Here's a really, really good example of a quarry. This is very bad for the environment. You, they're just destroying this whole ecosystem and creating a hole in the ground um, just to get like rocks, to, to get minerals. And then here's solar evaporation. Um, right, These white parts are going to be the salt. And then the darker blue is like new ocean water. So they just have them in these pools. They push the salt to one area um, and they let the evaporation happen to make it so that the minerals are at the bottom. Okay, so mining and people. Why is mining important? Well, um, it spurred the westward expansion of the United States. So if we didn't have the gold rush, we probably wouldn't care too much about Alaska or California, or at least that would wait a little bit. You know, it would take. 20 to 40 more years for people to go west if we didn't have that gold rush due to mining. So um, they're economic engines. You get a lot of revenue, a lot of social services, and a lot of employment coming out of uh, large mining operations. Um, the only thing about that is they most, I mean, there's not an infinite amount of resources in the ground, so mines are going to close. So a lot of people depend on the mines for their livelihood and the local economy. So when those mining companies are done with their minerals, they're out. They do not care about the people. So, um, you know, today we're going towards coal mining again. Well, when we realize yet again that that coal isn't the best fuel, and once we get rid of all of that coal, then those towns are going to be screwed over again. So 
Um, maybe instead of going back to coal mining, we can start thinking of new ways to engage this community because eventually it's not going to be a uh, feasible way for them to make a livelihood. So here is Leadville back in 1900. Um, it was a big mining area. Leadville was, was and still is a big mining community. Um, you can just see they, they made a town basically out of nothing. And then here's a town in Alaska that was a mining town. They um, ran out of all the minerals and ran out of like resources to be able to fund this operation. So it just closed down and now there's nothing there. Um, so those companies do not care. That's, that's the one thing that we need to think about. Okay, so mining in the economy. Um, let's just talk about the ecological impact a little bit of mining. Um, there's a lot of soil exposure, clearly. You're, you're digging a hole in the ground. Um, there's really nothing good about that. Um, flora and fauna destruction happens, so that's um, plants and animals. Surface and groundwater systems become polluted. Um, a lot of the times either with sediment or, uh, mostly it's sediment, but a good example is um, for gold mining, they use arsenic and cyanide to dissolve the rocks around the gold. Um, so that arsenic and cyanide in very small amounts, if it infiltrates the water system, that can be deadly to large populations of human beings. So um, that's something that isn't so great about mining. Um, and then drainage, that kind of goes into surface and groundwater systems. That drainage is going to go into tributary systems like streams and rivers, and then those are going to eventually go into larger bodies of water, which we take um, water from. Toxic substances, um, there are many of them, but you know, arsenic and cyanide, those are like really, really easy ones to talk about. And then just the alteration of landscape. Um, it's, it's never good to destroy a landscape. Um, without trying to reclaim it again. So here is, uh, I can't remember the name of this river, but there was a mining operation, um, like probably out here in the mountains. Um, they had all these, this deposition of sediment. Um, they didn't treat their, their water or um, get rid of the, um, the like drainage and the um, toxic substances from their mining operation. They were really, really bad about that. So all of that sediment, um, toxic substances, oils, stuff like that, just went straight into the river, river system and turned this river yellow. Um, a lot of the times mining operations do this and then the EPA gets blamed for um, not being on top of it. But um, really all it is, is is people trying to get more of this, more cheddar. So they, they cut corners without telling the Environmental Protection Agency. So here's Leadville. Um, right here we've got all these nice ski areas and then down in here where we've got the quarry they've just kind of destroyed the whole mountainside um, gotten rid of all the forests gotten rid of all of this nice habitat here and just dug a hole um, so that's not too great so long-term effects they have uh, extensive environmental damage um, you know if we leave in an open pit there's acid damage um, erosion, corrosion, sedimentation, dust emissions, all these things are really, really bad for environments. Um, so what we do to counteract that is reclamation. So in 1977, the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act came into play. Um, we figured out that mining was really destroying a lot of our ecosystems and no one was doing anything to get them better. So what they did was they started this process of reclamation, which um, essentially is setting regulations, taxing mining companies to recover or reclaim that land in, to a natural state. So here is reclamation. Before they were mining, they kind of destroyed this whole area. After they got all the minerals out that they wanted to, they said, okay, we're not going to make any more money out of this system. So we made it, um, the government made it so that they had to reclaim that area and plant a lot of vegetation, um, make it so this sediment wasn't so... Um, so easy to erode. Um, so they had to compact a lot of this down, all sorts of stuff like that. So that is all you're gonna need to know for mining. Um, there's a lot in this unit, but um, really I'm just trying to give you a lot of supplementary information. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and let me know, and uh, I'll see you in the next unit.